Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here on the world of YouTube. Delighted to have you on board. Thank you so much for stopping by. So this is a wine educational channel designed to really help those of you at home get more from wine, but specifically designed for those of you studying your wine qualifications. Welcome to a series here called Wines of the World, and this is really specifically aimed at those of you studying your WSET Level 4 Diploma. This is the Loire Valley Sessions, and there's many, many series. There are seven series in total, and this is the finale series. So this is the central vineyard section, including the AOCs. Looking here at part one on the introduction, climate and soils. So yes, this is the seventh series. And this is your first part in this seventh series. Parts one, this one, and two on the key grape varieties will be available as free content here on the world of YouTube. But... Parts three through to six are only available on my e-learning portal that's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. If you at home have any questions, concerns, or any comments, please pop them in the comments section below this video. And you can click a couple of things whilst you're there. The like button, because it always helps and subscribe so you get our weekly updates for all things wine education. If you are socially media inclined, then you can use the, uh, the, the tags we have at the bottom of every slide. So let's get diving into the central vineyard, so-called, because we find them in the center part of the Loire Valley, the river as in the course of the river, uh, and also really kind of in central-ish France. There's a couple of reasons for it. So really, this area is a collection of AOCs that are furthest east from the main grape growing areas of the Loire Valley, which we have covered in previous series. So of course, things like Touraine or Anjou-Sameur areas, for example. So we are really talking about the middle of the River Loire. It starts its life off. The source of the Loire is down towards the Massif Central. And here is about halfway through its course as it heads to the Atlantic. And that's a course of over 1,000 kilometers. And it's around places like uh, Nevers, the city of Nevers. You've got Bourges just down here. Orléans just off the top of this one. Auxerre, which is in fact nestled into Burgundy, these grey areas, actually Bur Burgundy vineyards, are very close. So the Loire and Burgundy really neighbours at this point in terms as of viticulture. Now, the most famous here, so we will focus on two AOCs for your syllabus, and that is, of course, Sancerre and Puy Fume. They are the two major AOCs, but there are other minor A AOCs that we will discuss, things like Rui, Conci, and Menetou Salon. Um, but there are others as well, but they're just not covered in the uh, the WSET Level 4 Diploma. That includes things like uh, Chateau Meliante down here at the bottom, and Côté de Gênes Noir, and also Puy sur Loire, which I actually will mention on the Puy Fume section later on, I think, on uh, video five. OK, so that's our location of the central vineyards. Uh, so if you just go to the left hand side, so the the west of this uh, this map, so where this dotted line is, of course, you're going to come into cities like Blois, Amboise and then Tours. So this is the Touraine area, which we covered in a previous uh, previous uh, uh, series. And if you come down to the south, that's actually following the Loire down here. Let me get a little arrow out so you're uh, you're good with this. So this way, going towards the source of the Loire, this is actually an area we call the Upper Loire, where we find places like the Ardèche, uh, the Côte Rouennaise, 
And that is actually a separate zone. It's not covered in the diploma syllabus, but it is a part of the Loire Valley, going towards places like Beaujolais and the Rhone, uh, very famous for things like Gamay and Chardonnay, for example. Côte de Forêt is another one down in that area as well. So um, what about the introductory things we need to talk about here in the central vineyard? So first of all, this part of the Loire is quite firmly continental. It is called the central vineyard. So it's in the landlocked central part of France and typically has those cold winters and you will find snow commonly here, certainly in times like January and February. And then it has those quite lovely warm if not hot summers as well. Uh, so quite classic for that. Also, in terms of some issues here, spring frosts are going to be something which is quite problematic in this area. Uh, and that is very typical in a cold and continental zone. So remember, on the map I just showed you, Orzère is very close just to the northeast. And this is where we find, eventually, if we go past Orzair, Chablis, that whole area classically known for really struggling against spring frost. And of course, we're very close by here in the central vineyards and the same rules apply. Also, we'll have some effect of summer hailstorms, which are becoming a bit more uh, intensive in recent times. So summer hailstorms, and of course, can be very detrimental for yield. In fact, can really, really decimate a yield through damaging, of course, things like shoots, leaves, and of course, flowers, but um, the flowers themselves, the grapes, uh, and uh, of course, leading to um, further issues like rot in the aftermath of a hailstorm. Then the location here, I've put a bit, bit of a map here just to show you that um, it is not as easy as just drawing straight lines for latitude. As you know, the Earth is curved. So you'll see here we have the 45th North Parallel, which goes nearly through Bordeaux and then through places like the Rhone Valley. And then the 50th North, which is north of Paris. Uh, so places like Champagne, sort of lie 48, 49. Most of the Loire actually this this kind of uh, place like Anjou, Saint-Meur, Terrain is on 47, 47 to 48 uh, and so with the central vineyards they're about 47 uh, sort of 47 north latitude which is a very high latitude in terms of the northern uh, the northern hemisphere. This creates due to the earth's axis its tilt you will find that in those summer months so this, of course, is talking about uh, here like August and September and even into October, you will have rather long growing season days. And we're talking really, uh, you know, at the peak somewhere around 15 to 16 hours of potential sunlight per day, which are long sunny days enabling excellent ripening. But it's with low intensity. Uh, and it also has uh, low heat here because, of course, it's cold. So you've got the cold conditions, low intensity sunlight, uh, but with long growing seasons. So uh, long growing season days. So you have that ability for gentle sunlight over a longer period of time. And this is said to really create restrained flavor styles in the final wine. If you go to somewhere like Marlborough, which of course is a very key wine region in New Zealand's South Island at the North Tip, that actually has greater amounts of sunlight than most of the Loire Valley and it's more intense due to its quite strategic location and lower uh, latitude than you would find in this high latitude Loire Valley. So you find that that's where you really get more punchy, aromatic, more potential fruit forward styles in New Zealand. Here it's much more restrained in its character. Okay, so that's a bit more about the climatic conditions of the central vineyards. Um, high rainfall. Now the Loire Valley is a valley and it's not exceptionally mountainous. Uh, it has some hills that offer some protection like the Morge Hills, which are found uh, very close to Anjou. Uh, but you will find that the Atlantic funnels its weather pattern, that Gulf Stream comes up 
the Loire Valley. So it actually does mean that it empties across a lot of the Loire, creating fairly high rainfall. So quite high for a continental region. So we're talking about 750 millimetres per year. This is greater, by the way, than London in the United Kingdom. And if you want to think about that, a lot of people think classically that London is just a damp squid. But in fact, it is, it's is—it's really quite low in rainfall. It's just very misty. It's very um, drizzly and very grey. Uh, but it doesn't tend to have very heavy rainfalls. To compare it to other places, uh, you know, it's a lot greater than places like Mendoza that has two 250 millimetres uh, and about equivalent, maybe just a little bit less than uh, than Bordeaux, we found, find down in the southwest of France. Now, of course, there is a reduction of drought due to the um, rainfall patterns that can happen throughout the year. Uh, but the issues really are about really excessive rainfall, creating, uh, of course, problems around excessive growth. Uh, so that's, of course, um, growth which then really combats against things like uh, uh, the actual the grapes themselves growing and ripening. And then we've got, uh, of course, problems around mildew and rot, which can be a significant issue. So fungal diseases can, of course, be markedly higher here. Now, the key grape varieties here, now the principal grape variety, which I will cover in depth on our um, next video, is Sauvignon Blanc. It is by far the most important variety. Uh, second to that would be Pinot Noir, uh, and that makes most of our reds and pink wines of the area. And I will go through the varieties, the key varieties, in the next video. Soils here, you've got the three major groups of soils up here, but there are many affiliated to these three groups. Uh, and here they are. So first of all, in the top right hand picture here, you've got Kayot. And Kayot are um, very shallow soils, about sort of 25 to 40 millimetres, which are over limestone. So it's this very uh, uh, very loose rock, uh, which is sedimentary based over limestone. Now, fruit that is grown on the Kayot are said to produce the most aromatic wines, the most flavoursome wines that are often the most ready to drink of the central vineyards and have less potential for ageing than the others. To the top left, we have Terre Blanche. Uh, so white earth, of course, this is really um, the limestone and marley soils that one can find in Burgundy and Chablis. We have a, this is the top left here, so the marl element to it is what you can see as the real clumpy background, that is the, the clay-based soils, and then you've got, of course, the, the clumps of limestone in there, so quite typical across Burgundy, very close by. Now, the slow ripening on these soils, which includes some of Sancerre's most famous vineyards, including, of course, the slope of Mont Damnay, so the, the damned mountain, and also Cour de Beaujeu as well. Uh, fruit grown on this soil tends to produce the most structured um, potentially the most full-bodied expressions that need long maturation before they are ready to drink and they can age very, very well. And the bottom one, which probably gets the most amount of air time, and that is silex, known in English as flint. So a five-letter word in both types of language. So these flinty soils are, uh, of course, much more um, uh, uh, composed of big, heavier rocks, as you can see, which is flint-based. So flint, classically in the past, used in warfare for muskets, uh, so also used for fires as well in bushcraft. Uh, if you knock a couple together, it creates sparks. Um, so this is an important, uh, a real imp important commodity of the past. Uh, but this really builds up heat. It leads to earlier ripening, like the area La Romane, for example. Fruit grown on these soils are said to produce wines 
with a uh, how do I put this with a a flinty or a, a stony or smoky character. Now, geologically, it is very difficult for a uh, completely impossible, in fact, for that flavor of the soil to get into the wine because the flavor of the soil, the minerals we get, the flint itself is actually odor and flavorless. But potentially it's to do with the different heat transfer you have. Potentially it's to do with uh, the amount of uh, acidity that is produced. And maybe that's what gives us the kind of impression of this kind of smoky characteristic. But that being said, please, please, please don't fall into the trap of just thinking that every wine that's labeled with silex soils or it says flint on the label or silex will be flinty. Uh, it's not as easy as that because you can get non-flinty soils like Cairot or maybe Terre Blanche, for example, that can display that smoky uh, character, which sometimes the French will uh, describe as pierre fusil, which means uh, gun flint. Uh, but I do challenge many of you to actually tell me if you have smelt a musket fire before, uh, because it's quite an old school thing to happen in the world. Um, so that uh, brings me to the end of our first video uh, on this series. So I really hope you've enjoyed it about a uh, little bit about the, um, the introduction, the location uh, and the key grape varieties and the geology. Next up, we're actually looking at part two, which is on key grape varieties, of course, hugely focusing here on Sauvignon Blanc, going into the history of the grape variety and, of course, its key characteristics. That's available on This World of YouTube. As always, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, get in touch by commenting on this video and make sure you click like and subscribe. Uh, and if you do want to have access to a much bigger wealth of videos, I have filmed hundreds and hundreds of them, many of them exclusive, please do across, go across to my e-learning portal at www winewithjimmy.com. It's ad free with lots of lots of tools to help you with your wine studies. And if you find yourself in London, come and see me at one of my establishments for a glass, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now.